And welcome back to my let's play of Aurora 4X. Uh, last episode we were we started pre-production of components for our combat vessels, and we are pretty much continuing that net today. Um, chugging along, hopefully without getting ganked by. Um, any invader combat ships because we really do need to catch them and ambush them um, on our side of the jump point Chugging along nicely. What do we still need? We still need how many engines do we have? We have six engines, lasers, resolution ten sensors. I'm thinking once we get a one twenty sensor, that'll be enough for our laser ship. And then we can start building that. And then once the other ones start finish, start complete, uh, then we can start producing some flagships. <clears throat> because we don't need the flagships right this very instant because we just, well, don't. Um, because we, we we don't we're not facing any missiles right now, and they're not very good for ambush. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, we can start production. It was in Melbourne, wasn't it? Yes. Perfect. We can start production on the Melbourne. Let's actually give it some names. So, what do we need? <clears throat> we want... At least Captain Rank. That's fine. And for our Melbourne class destroyers, we are going to be calling them... After breeds of dogs. I'm a dog person, so... We we'll use some. We we'll use that. And for a river class, let's call them after birds. There we go. So, beagle. So our first ship is going to be the beagle. Are we having? Yep, yeah, we got enough for three. We got enough for one more. We'll get the Bloodhound as well. I think that's almost all the engines gone. Yeah, almost all the engines gone. <clears throat> we'll wait for some more engines. So we need three engines per ship, so we'll wait for three more to get built. Got plenty of fire controls though. But we only need one of those per ship, so <laughs> counter counter measures. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so that's the sanded laser complete. 
And once this is done, we can shift production into engines, get those pumped out a little bit faster. <clears throat> Once we get the jump point blockaded, then we can start expanding into Seoul, getting new colonies set up and all that. It's just a little bit too dangerous with a guy running around who is happy to ram into people. We're going to have to increase our maintenance facility size. Um, facility. Each one adds 250 tons, so we need four per thousand. So we need 10 of them. Now, oh, easy. All right, our first two ships are ready. Let's get another one out. Okay, what's Antonio doing? Looks like he's trying to go somewhere. Either that or he got left behind. I don't know what he's doing. Can I actually even move? Ah, he's all the way over there. Okay. It's working. All right, and we'll get the maintenance facility up and running. Now, the, the alternative, of course, to building maintenance facilities is to produce essentially a landing um an, a landing pad um so you got advantages of both so maintenance facilities will handle any number of ships as long as they are below the maximum tonnage of the maintenance however they will consume minerals to keep to stop your ships from, from breaking apart to run that maintenance on the other hand, what you can do is you can create, essentially, a landing pad. You make a PDC, which doesn't require maintenance, and you bolt a bunch of hangar space onto it, and then you can dock sh ships to it like any other mothership, and that way the, the PDC will maintain them for free indefinitely. Um, so you essentially pay zero maintenance for the entire kit. So the PDC doesn't pay maintenance and anything docked in the PDC doesn't pay maintenance either. Problem, of course, is that A, you have to build the PDC and B, um, you have very limited hangar space. So if you have 20,000 tons of hangar space, you can only fit 20,000 tons worth of ship. If you have 300,000 300, tons worth of ship, you're going to have to build a lot of PDCs with a lot of hangar bays. Um, granting, you can build a PDC as big as you want, 
but it's still going to be limited. You can't just pump out as many of, of the same ship as you want. Um, otherwise, the maintenance bays are going to have to take care of it. And then, of course, there's the whole docking and undocking thing and all that. So what I might do, because ideally um, I'm going to have a limited amount of ships, at least early on, is I might go ahead and actually do that anyway. Um, not just because um, it'll be handy, but also because, you know, it'll be a great demonstration, great, great for demonstration purposes, because that's half the reason I'm actually doing this Let's Play in the first place. To show you all exactly what Aurora can do. <clears throat> so, we'll probably actually do that a little bit later on. Once we get our system secured. And of course, having ships ready like that will make life a lot easier once you start putting fighters out because you'll already have hangar space on the planet not that they really need hangar space but that's the only way they can repair and maintain so yeah there you go okay power up at 15200 that's perfect uh, we've got another three ion drives, so we'll get uh, the Melbourne out. Still got plenty of workers, perfect. Once we secure the system, we'll also start work on, um, yeah, we'll start working colonizing uh, probably Luna and Mars at least to begin with. Um, and we'll probably do Mercury as well at some point. And we'll need to start mining soon as well because we're about to run out of Tritanium and Boronite. And Galasite is also starting to run low as well. So with those minerals running out, running low, we're going to have to start mining. Um, nearby bodies, which means we're definitely going to have to make sure that our system is as secure as we can make it. There we go. Double production on the engines. Do we have another three? Not yet. Yeah, so it takes us a few months to get an engine out, but working on it nice and quick. All right, that's another one. <laughs> Bulldog and Chihuahua. I think this will be the last round of sensor we'll go for. We'll get some construction and production up because we need to get our industry and um, all that working a bit faster because only have a 12 a construction rate of 12 and want to get that higher i might actually start working on that right now because we need to get our scientist actually competent let's get to work and Yeah, no, we'll hold off on that. Hmm. 
What's next? Next is going to be the fire control that's going to be finished next. And we can actually go ahead and tool for river. So we can start production when engines get complete. How many ships do we have so far? Four. I need two more. That will get us a squadron of six. That's the second engine. We've got a few, we've got quite a few to, um, scientists as well, which is excellent. Thankfully, we have a biology guy who is more than capable of getting us some terraforming tech. Okay, well now we've got two levels of ECCM. That's our fifth Melbourne. Do we have three engines? Yes, we do. This will now be sixth. With the next engine, we will go ahead and make us a point defense ship. Just one for now, because we don't need lots of them. Yep, three, excellent. Get the bat. All right, we're gonna we're gonna get ourselves a very nice little combat squad, and with the deployment time, we'll have a year to get our second combat squad up and running, which is a nice. No. Right, what do we got? New class of ship. Oh boy, here we go. This is going to be potentially a problem. If these guys are missile ships, we're not going to be able to combat them right now. All right, we'll move our squad across who we do have. We'll leave sensors off right now because we're not going to be able to spot any missiles anyway. And we're going to run five minute turns and see what they do. Well, they definitely have active sensors, which means these are probably going to be offensive ships. But they're only doing 78, so we can definitely outrun them, which is good. They're moving away. Yeah, these guys are going to be... I'll bet anything that these guys are going to be missile boats. Okay. Let's talk weapons. So we have two fire controls and we have 
five weapons. So right now, because these guys are really only meant to be shooting one thing at a time, I'm going to assign all of them. There we go. So all five guns are linked up to this single fire control, and we're going to set it to final defensive fire. So what this basically means is that um, if any missiles are about to hit any ship in the task group, all guns will open fire to hopefully shoot them down. And I'll copy the assignment, so the, this configuration, to all ships in the task group. So now, you'll notice all the ships have the exact same assignment. So hopefully that will help protect us if we get shot at by missiles, because we are pretty much guaranteed to have been spotted. Um, just in case, I flip my active sensors on. And what I might do is I might actually consolidate all my task groups into one. Because that way, I have at least some point defense. There. So that way, if they're shooting at my survey ships or anything like that, um, I'll have at least some chance of actually doing something about it. And 30 second increments, yeah, they're definitely firing missiles. They're coming closer. Well, that... Hmm. Let's see what happens. Yep, there they are. And... Oh, boy. Well, I think we're about to lose all, all of our ships. Because we just simply cannot combat that level of missile. Nope. Not even at all. If we're really lucky, they will have shot all the missiles at a single target. That single target will die, and then all the missiles will self-destruct. Well, one of our combat ships has just been destroyed. And, of course, they're not going to self-destruct. There goes another one. Yeah, and because they don't have the sensors, they're not even detecting them. They're not even firing. The missiles are just way too fast. Okay. So, now that you've all seen what the invaders can do, I'm going to take a small break, I'm going to scrub them from existence,
and we're going to continue and we're going to continue on a little bit longer because at this stage this entire save is basically scrubbed and they're pretty much just going to eliminate us there's no point continuing on so give me a few moments and actually there's five minutes to go let's talk combat for a little bit and then we'll sc I'll scrub it between the games so with damage okay so shoot so 25 points of damage right without shields you take damage N armor absorbs it based on the damage profile we don't even have any ships left to show you um so nine damage was absorbed five continues on and we take shock damage as well because of the amount of damage that we're getting dealt by each hit because damage penetrates armor it causes damage to components so this let's say let's, let's have a look at this particular hit right so nine damage was absorbed by the armor and it's a 25 point hit so that means that uh 16 damage by uh, passed through the armor and damaged components and then an additional five damage was dealt so that would be 21 damage in total from this one hit so it rolls a, ran rolls a random component based on the damage allocation chart. So it will roll a random number between 1 and 290. And it will, whatever number it lands on, it will pick a, that particular component. If, that, if there is a surviving com uh, a component, an intact component of that type, then it will deliver... An equal number, uh, it will take damage from the damage pool and allocate it until it exceeds or matches the hit hit to kill value of that particular component. So for an, for an engineering, um, for so the gravitational survey sensor has only one hit to kill. So one point was allocated and that component was destroyed. Um, the crew associated with that component was then lost as well. So, because it still had 20 points of damage left, it was a 21 damage hit, it then allocated, uh, it then rolled again, and it picked, for example, the ion drive, and if you have a look with this number here, right, so it, you have 8 engineering spaces with 1 hit to kill each, and 20 crew quarters with 1 hit to kill, fire control, 2 fire controls, 1 hit to kill, um, the goth turret, there, we have 4 of them, and each one has 4 hit to kill, and with the iron drive, we have 3 iron drives, and it has 25 hit to kill, so because it had 25 hit to kill, it absorbed the entire 20 point pool, um, since it, it wasn't enough to outright destroy it, it then rolled, um, a percentage chance based on the amount of damage divided by the hit to kill value. So 20 divided by 25 was somewhere in the 80 percent mark. Um, because it was because it was so much damage, the drive was outright destroyed. But it managed to absorb the rest of the damage, and then no further was added on. If you have a look at the second hit, then um, so the second one was 25. 9 damage was absorbed by the armor, so obviously hit an undamaged section of the ship, and it dealt 6 additional damage. Um, there's a small um, random percentage modifier to shock damage. So, hit the jump drive. Let me stop clicking on that. Hit the jump drive. Jump drive... Um, which one was this? This is actually... The exploration ship. Here we go. So 300, yeah. So hit the jump drive. Jump drive has... No, it's not the Sydney. It's a camera. Here it is. <clears throat> so hit the jump drive. Jump drive got rolled. And it's got eight hit to kill. There was sufficient damage. Eight was allocated. Jump drive was destroyed. So further, further damage was available, so it rolled again, hit the gravitational survey, knocked it out. Further damage available, roll again, hit the geological survey, knocked it out. And this process repeats until there is no more damage in the pool, or all internal components are destroyed. So because it knocked out the, all the remaining components, uh, let's see, so gravitational survey, we only had two of those, so destroyed one, lost an engine lost the jump drive so engine jump drive 
um, lost the other gravitational geological survey, so that's all the sensors, all the surveys knocked out, jump drive and engine knocked out, so we only got crew quarters, engineering spaces, fuel storage, so fuel storage destroyed, crew quarters, engineering, and another fuel storage, so yeah, so re-rolled, I uh, lost two crew quarters. Rerolled until there was nothing left, and then it lost. Now there is another factor that can cause it to be destroyed before all the components are destroyed. So what it basically does is it rolls and it looks for, a and when it selects a category, it looks for surviving components. If it can't find any surviving components, then it will roll again until it can find the category with a surviving component. If it does this 20 times in a row and it can't find, and it, and it can't, or ends up not selecting a category with surviving components, then it will automatically kill the ship outright. So the more categories you have and the more components you have in that category, the longer the ship is able to survive before being basically blown apart by just having by just being gutted out. Um, so with this one, it didn't knock out all the fuel storage, so we had nine and um, there was more. Uh, it only knocked out one of them. So obviously must have picked the engine or the jump drive or one of these other more common, more likely ones uh, sufficient times to completely destroy the ship outright. So, there you go. Um, I'd love to show you uh, armor, but unfortunately, we didn't have any ships that survived a volley. And it kind of sucks that we lost our shipyards as well. So, that's half an hour. So, I'll put a stop here so that we don't lose the entire save and have to scrub from scratch. Um, I might actually toss a coin. I'll either scrub the invaders from the game and we'll continue on with this one uh, because I really want to show you terraforming and stuff like that. And with the systems that we have discovered, it would be really great to um, explore and exploit uh, some of those. Um, alternatively, um, I have... Uh, I'm going into a bit of a discussion on the chat on... Um, and ran into a particular scenario start that I'm really keen to explore. So I'll toss a bit of a coin and I'll either scrub it and we'll continue on, or I will start that particular scenario, um, whether I do it from scratch or roll up and ca maybe catch up to a similar level to this one. I'm not really sure. I might even just do both and, and do both uh, playthroughs at the same time. But um, yeah, we'll, ha we'll have to wait and see. But for now, we'll put a cut and um, keep an eye on the comments and I'll let you know there.